You're the reason I wake up each day. I fold my hands to you. I pray, thanking you for carrying me through. With every hardship, I know what to do. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to New Hope in the Lord. I'm Reverend Joseph, your host, and I thank you for watching our broadcast today. Uh, hope, hope, hope. That's what the world needs, is hope. Do you have that hope in your heart? And if you do, what is your hope? You know, the Bible, over and over and over, um, in the New Testament, tells us the hope for all mankind is having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all peace and joy. The God of hope. But the hope is not a hope that the non-believer has. Um, I hope I get a job. I hope that they'll whatever sell me the car at a uh, good price. I hope, I hope. It's not a sure thing. Uh, but the hope um, that the Bible teaches is all through Jesus Christ. It's a surety. It's a surety that we know, that we know, that we know that God is for us, he's going to take care of us, and that Jesus Christ paid the price for our sins on the cross, and that we have a free gift for eternal eternity and it's called eternal life with the Lord and we know it because the Holy Spirit is in us and we receive Christ into our life so as you're watching this broadcast today uh, my prayer is that the God of hope will come into your heart if you're not a believer and a follower of Jesus take away your sins and give you a peace uh, and that passes all human understanding in the midst of turmoil that we live in, in America and in this country. So uh, Russell, God bless you, Russell Hernandez. Thank you for um, taking time out of your schedule and to come and to share about how the God of hope uh, has changed your life. So why don't you just start uh, with your with your upbringing, um, Russell? Did you uh, go to church? Uh, were your family believers? Were they religious? Um, nice to have you aboard today. Well, first, I would like to say thank you, uh, Reverend Cohen, and, and your team for having me. It's an honor. Um, <clears throat> yeah, my, up, my upbringing is when I was little, you know, maybe around 10 or so, my, my, mom, my mom's a believer, my dad, not so much, but my mom would bring me to church. And, and I went for a few weeks, but then due to, to my father, you know, not really being a believer, I, I kind of would lean more towards his view because I looked up to him and then I stopped going. I want to ask you, um, Russell, you said 10 years old. Uh, what happened uh, before you were 10 years old? Uh, you, you just, you, you just uh, weren't in church at all? I mean, I guess you were. Uh, no, not what, was it? What, what, what caused your mother to bring you to church at, at 10? Well, she's a believer. I'm, I'm sure she probably brought me here and there sooner than, than that. But as far as I can remember, I remember around like 10 years old going to church. And so basically, uh, your, your, your father, who's the head of the house, the father figure, uh, mm -hmm. didn't have the Lord. And um, it um, was a tough thing, uh, I guess, for your mother, because now you're kind of leaning towards what your father um, uh, is a, as a non-believer. Right, right, right. You and know, so, just uh, the, the father figure. And, and maybe, yeah, you know, the, yeah, the, the father figure. So now, uh, as, as you're not uh, go, going uh, to church, you're not hearing about Jesus. When you did go, uh, were you um, listening to what uh, was said? And if you were, did you hear about uh, the born again message? Um, I may have, but I don't remember it because I wasn't really taking it serious, serious at the time. And, and I remember just really singing mostly, uh, in that particular church singing songs and, and doing like children's ministry that maybe wasn't the best children's ministry. 
you know. <laughs> so, so now, why don't you just start to share about uh, what happened uh, in your journey uh, of your life, um, you know, after, you know, you're leaving church and kind of growing up in your school and so forth. Right. <clears throat> so I was in school and, and throughout school, uh, you know, junior high school, high school, I considered myself an atheist. I didn't, I didn't believe in God, and I didn't think there was a reason to believe in God. It wasn't until I was about 18, or 17 rather, when I first had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. You know, and, so why and, don't you just uh, let us uh, know what, what that means? Right. Well, when I was 17, I had an encounter with, uh, with a family member who was demonically possessed. Hmm. So... My, my, my encounter with God, firstly, was from realizing that there was evil in the world first. And then from that evil, knowing that there, if there's evil, there must be a God. And then, and then feeling the Holy Spirit in me and, and, and feeling just a presence of, of love and, and, and peace within me during the midst of a storm. When you say of feeling the presence, um, was there any time... Um, in in your life uh, up to that point, were you asked, were you an atheist? I mean, uh, um, how did Christ? I mean, you personally didn't ask him to come in your heart, I would gather, but now you're saying you're feeling his presence. Uh, did somebody ever tell you about God? Anybody talk to you about Jesus, even as an atheist? Yeah, my 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 mother all the time. You know, but it wasn't until I, I actually felt the presence of God that, that I could know that, that this is real. This is not just somebody telling me that he's real. I know and, for a fact real. And, and so what's uh, happening after that um, encounter that you had? Well, after that encounter, you know, me being stubborn, I didn't, I didn't you know, I, I knew there was a God, but I didn't, I didn't know who God was and who God is. So I didn't, I didn't know about Jesus Christ yet, really. So fast forward about two years later, I met my, my girlfriend at the time, now, now wife, and, and she brought me to, to Yorktown Assembly of God. So when she brought me to, to Yorktown Assembly of God, that's like the second or third time I felt the presence of God and the, and the Holy Spirit working within me. From there, um, Pastor Foster led me to Christ and, and that's when I started learning learning more and, and reading the word and, and figuring out what, what everything meant. Before you had come to Christ, um, what was your life like, your makeup within? Um, did you have a lot of fear? Did you have a void uh, in your life? Uh, were you out there in the world? Were you partying? Um, did you ever ask yourself, what am I doing here? Uh, why was I born? Yes. <laughs> All of that. <clears throat> you know, I was out in the world. I was doing the wrong things. Um, I had a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear about what, I, what was going to happen when I die. You know, I had, I had uh, depression, all of the above. And, and, and more importantly, a, a hole in my heart. That's a, a hole that only Christ can fill. You know, Christ size hole. So basically, uh, Russell, what you were doing is you were just doing um, what, um, well, children uh, your age and unfortunately even younger um, are, are doing now uh, because of the void that's in your life and was in your life and their life uh, to trying to fill that, fill that, fill that void and. Um, the depression that you had, um, what, 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 is there anything particular that you would think uh, that would cause that in your life? Um, just different things. It could have been, uh, you know, my, my parents got divorced. That, that was one thing that triggered that. Um, you know, just, just not having hope in, in anything after this, this temporal world, and that also triggers it. I mean, after, after finding Christ, you, you realize that, that this this world is only temporary, and the plans that God has for us are eternal, so it doesn't end here. With your father, um, what kind of relationship uh, did you have uh, with him 
uh, before the divorce and, and then after the divorce? We didn't have a, a very good relationship at all. Um, you know, and, and I, work, I worked with him doing carpentry for about nine years. Wow. <clears throat> so at 17, I left home. I moved to, the, I moved to Manhattan, the Upper East Side. And then I, I started working carpentry. And then, um, you know, I worked with him for nine years and, and we had a terrible relationship to the point where I had to, I had to quit just to rebuild our relationship. You know, this is uh, a uh, tremendous um, happening uh, in the world, um, but not just today. Uh, for a long time, um, Satan wants uh, the family to be broken up right. through divorce, and he also wants um, children not to have a father figure active in their life. Yeah. Uh, b because, um, and, and here it is, uh, Russell, you're, you're working with your father uh, for, for nine years and, and, and you have animosity in, in your heart. He has animosity maybe in his heart uh, towards you and um, it causes you to quit. There must have been a, a lot of anger that was in your, in your soul. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And did, did the anger, did, did you take it out? Uh, what, what ways did you take, take it out uh, in? Because, uh, or did you just keep it in? Hmm. And it was just, you know, like a, like a explosion that could happen at, at times. You know, there's people that have this anger and without going to God and getting it forgiven and, and God forgiving you, you know, it could be an explosion. What was that like in your in your life? You hit you hit the nail on the head. <clears throat> uh, I was the type that, you know, I would hold it in, whatever it is, and I would just let it fester and build up, and build up, and build up until finally there's no more containing it, and I would just explode. So, <clears throat> after meeting Christ, you know, I I remember just crying out to him and, and, you know, asking for forgiveness and, and just, you know, being open and honest and, and sorry for, for everything I've done and, and not forgiving other people for what they've done to me. And then I remember just crying out and then just the wave of peace coming over me, you know, indescribable. <laughs> Say that again. What came over you? Like a wave of peace, mm -hmm. you know, peace, happiness, joy. Uh, you probably thought, Russell, that um, in your younger years, um, partying and doing uh, what you were doing, because um, when you're in that kind of situation, uh, you just feel that way. You feel good. You feel peaceful. You feel happy. Uh, what happens after you stop doing that what you're doing? Like you got to go home and go to bed and wake up in the morning. <laughs> Yeah. How was that compared to you waking up in the morning now? Well, before, you know, you, you go out, you have fun, you know, you do whatever you want. And, and admittedly, it's, it's very selfish. You know, you're just doing whatever you feel that you, that you want to do. And then when you go home, you're, you're just like depressed because now you're alone. You know, there's not all this, this fun in these eyes to go off of, whether that be drugs or alcohol or, or hanging out. And, and doing things with women and stuff like that. And now when I, when I go home, you know, I have, I have peace about me and I'm, I'm happier than ever. It's like true happiness. Whereas in the world you, you think that's happiness, but in reality, it's, it's really not. I was very um, happy to hear uh, about your working uh, with your relationship with your father um, to, to, kind of uh, mend it um, without Christ in your life. And if I was just speaking to you on a program that was secular mm -hmm. uh, and you didn't have Christ in your life, would that ever have been possible? Not, no, not likely, <laughs> you know, not likely at all. You know, I may have even turned into something bad. E you know, even worse. Even worse. Yeah, uh, because I, I would gather a lot of that uh, anger uh, that was pet up in you was uh, because you didn't have a relationship with your father who you had mentioned you looked up to. 
um, right. when you were young. Right. And that even carried over into, into, my, into my relationship with God because he's our heavenly father. And I, and I struggled in the beginning, you know, getting comfortable with him. You know, it, it's even like uh, in the word it says that um, I, I think Paul, he, he laid his head on, on Christ's uh, bosom, on his chest. John. Yeah. Or John. Yeah. And, and that, that blew my mind. It's like, man, how could another man lay his head on another man's chest like that? You know, but, but now I realize the relationship and, and that he wants that relationship with us, you know. And that's why so many, so many, so many, so many men, especially, but also women, have a hard time uh, believing that there's a God in heaven that wants to love them unconditionally uh, right. because they've had a bad relationship with their father. Yeah. And uh, you um, have experienced what the true relationship with the Lord is. Yeah. And, and, and that's to know him as your father. Yeah. And, and, and the thing uh, that is uh, so beautiful is, is that you uh, came to Christ pretty soon after you went to church. Yeah, yeah, maybe like within like a week or two. Yeah. So many people get introduced to the Lord through going to church or being witnessed to besides your mother. Because the hardest thing to do is for family to come to Christ through family. Right. Uh, right. It's mostly God has to send somebody else uh, who maybe you watch something on TV, over the Internet, uh, somebody you never know uh, that comes and just starts talking about Jesus. And, and, and it takes a long time. But well, for you, just a couple of weeks, uh, it, 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 it saved your mind from, from uh, craziness and insanity. Yeah, well, I mean, that was after two years of <laughs> knowing that there's a God and not actually seeking after him, you know, so. Be because you went from being an atheist. Right. And, 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 and when you said seek after him, um, if there's an atheist that's uh, gonna watch this program, um, that's all you have to do is, is, I don't believe in you, God, but if you're real, show me. Right. And, 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 and he will. And, and, and the thing is, is that um, now you, your uh, girlfriend is a believer and God used her. Right. And, and right. now she's, she's your wife. And to backtrack a bit, my, my mother during high school, she would try to bring me to church all the time and, and, and share, share the gospel and everything. And I wasn't having it. You know, like you said, it's, it's sometimes harder for a family member to bring you to Christ as opposed to somebody else. So God, God used my mother to, to share these things with me for sure. But, but then he used Jasmine to bring me to Yorktown, Assembly of God. And then he used Pastor Foster to bring me, to, bring me directly to him. So, you know, everybody had their, their part in it. And, uh, but the, the one who had the biggest part was the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who, who, who brings you to Christ. And so, yeah. um, so when you first came to the Lord and, and pastors starting to mentor you and now you have a foundation, um, how, did it take you a, a while before you went back to share the gospel and about Christ to those people that you were hanging out or did you do it right away? Uh, because I believe you... You, you kind of did it um, because of you found the truth and you want others to know that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. But, but it did take me a while. It probably took me around uh, maybe two years because when I first found Christ, I wasn't really, you know, even studying the word like that or, or, or I wasn't really devoted. So was I truly saved? I don't know. Well, you know, where you were because Jesus was your savior. Yeah, but um, but I don't. But, but he wasn't. But he wasn't Lord as of yet. Yeah, he wasn't you Lord know? as of. And, and so you know, the Bible says, "You confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you're saved." So you, you were a believer, uh, but you were not one that was, you know, like you're now doing now, and and you 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 you're, you're a young man, and it's so uh, wonderful to see. Uh, young men and young women that are uh, coming to Christ 
and um, having that hope. And so what, what did God do for you in your journey? Uh, because you have a purpose and a plan, and God has a hope and a future for you. Uh, what, what's been going on, uh, Russell, now? Well, um, you know, I've, I've done uh, media for Yorktown for several years. Um, I helped in, in the youth ministry with the high schoolers. Um, and then basically anywhere else I'm needed, I'm, I'm always willing and available. You know, We're, right now, my wife and I are looking to maybe sponsor some children in another Great. country. Any, any way we can give back because God has blessed, <laughs> blessed us more than I can, more than I can say, you know, and he's always been gracious to us, even though we don't deserve it and we can never earn it, you know. And to backtrack, really, yeah. uh, my encounter with, with God, yeah. it's, it's funny how it works because what the enemy meant for evil, God turned it around and used it for good. So that, that demonic possession of a family member was meant to, to break me down, but it actually ended up bringing me closer to God. It actually uh, brought you to believe there was a God. Right, right. <laughs> and... Oh, when um, you came after the two years really to the fullness of God and you're starting to, um, you know, read the word and, and fellowship more and whatnot, uh, your mother must have been uh, full of joy uh, seeing that the seeds that she planted uh, in, in the ground uh, now are, is coming up like a, like a beautiful flower. Yeah, she loves it. You know, she she couldn't be happier, and rightfully so because now now you have like a security about that that person. You know? And she knows that her her son Russell is gonna be in heaven uh, once he dies and not judge for his sins, which God doesn't want anybody to die and go to hell and the lake of fire, because that's what Jesus died on the cross for, so that we would have hope here on earth but then know that when we're absent from the body, we'll be present with the Lord and there'll be no pain, no sorrow, no sickness, no disease. There won't be any, any um, crimes. It's just a whole bunch of all the, the negative evil stuff not going to be there. And now with your dad, um, uh, did your dad uh, make a commitment to Christ yet? Um, or um, is he still a kind of... Um, the way that he was when you were, you know, growing up? Um, he's still kind of the way that he was. I mean, you know, I'm hoping that, that the Holy Spirit is doing the work in him without me knowing, you know. And that happens a lot. But he has had, he has had, excuse me, he's had to see the change uh, in his son uh, from a, um, uh, a, a young boy who was working with him for nine years, not wanting to have anything to do with him, and now having a relationship to be mended. Right, right. And that, that relationship is, for the most part, mended. And and he definitely does see a change because he's told me that he, see, he sees a change and he sees a peace about me, you know. Well, you just continue to let your light so shine um, and um, jealousy will come into his heart <laughs> and, and he'll, he'll say uh, one day, my son has it and, and I need it. And when you said that, uh, a lot of time that happens, uh, Russell, where people are closer to the Lord than you would think, especially relatives, um, because they have that pride inside that would not kind of let them know that. But the Bible is very, very plain. In Acts chapter 16, verse 31, Paul told the jailer, who was not a believer, you know, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household shall be saved. And uh, the jailer did come and get saved and his household. So uh, we, we just believe with you that your, your dad's going to get saved. So uh, why don't you just uh, share something uh, on your heart? There might be some younger people that are going to watch the show here that are out there uh, partying and going out in the world and um, having that depression, having that oppression uh, when they go home and next day being the same old, same old person. 
and um, and just the worst thing is that when they die without Christ, they'll be eternally damned. So why don't you just share something from your heart? Right. I would just say, you know, the word says to seek him, to seek the Lord with with all your heart and you will find him. So if you don't know Christ yet, seek him. You know, even like you said, you know, I, I don't believe in you, God, but if you're real, reveal yourself to me. Just just do it. Seek him. What's the worst that can go wrong? And and I promise your life will be forever changed. And for those that are already Christians, I would say just keep on keeping on. You know, it's not it's not easy as many as the world would would like to believe that being a Christian is easy, but it's it's really not. It's actually harder. And and just keep on keeping on and and stay steadfast in your in your prayer and your your reading of the word, and just keep on keeping on. That's it. And, and the reason why it's harder, because um, when you do come to Christ, you, you, you change allegiance. Right. Uh, you change from one camp to the other. Uh, of course, there's Satan worshipers, uh, and there are unfortunately many of them, and they'll be eternally damned with him in the lake of fire uh, forever, uh, unless they repent and come to Christ. Um, but there are a whole bunch of other people that do not know there's a devil, but they're away from Christ and they're religious uh, into different type of things. Uh, but he has a hold of them. Uh, but once that individual comes to Christ, now he changes camp and now the enemy comes pretty hard against you. Is there some situation, Russell, where um, the enemy came in uh, pretty bad against you, maybe you and your wife, and, and then you could just uh, share about how God intervened? I mean, there, there's there's been times where I've definitely, um, my faith has been tested for sure. But, you know, not to the point where where I stopped believing or, or it affected me too, too much. Because my, my faith, I would consider my faith very strong. You know, whenever I have an issue or a problem, it's all right here. The answer is all in there. So whenever I have any issues, I go straight to the word or I go straight to prayer. And, and uh, everything for life is in the Bible. Everything. Everything. Everything that we need is in the Word of God. Yep. And, it's and all so relevant. It, it, everything is here. Whatever it is, any problems. Well, uh, thank you, Russell, for uh, coming on and, and sharing uh, hope, truth. And uh, we just believe for your dad that your dad's going to come to Christ because uh, he... Um, he needs Jesus. The whole world needs Jesus. Uh, thank you Amen. so much, Russell, for taking time out of your schedule. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, um, Joe Cohen. Thank hey, you. God bless you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, the Bible says, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Um, Joshua brought that out to the children of Israel. And uh, nobody answered because uh, they wanted one foot in the world and they wanted one foot with Jesus. I pray that you would come to Christ. And Joshua said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. God bless you and uh, have a good day and receive Jesus in your heart.